Greetings and peace, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we're going to talk about the 19 commandments of the Fatimiyya Sufi order and what it means for me. So I hope you enjoy this presentation and I hope you're able to get something out of it. Now, here we start with the greatest name, the name of God, the one, the all in glorification of sanctification. Praise and glory be to the regal substance of the eternally hidden and eternally manifest radiant and illuminating treasure of being and existence, who from the divine wellsprings hath once more opened the cyanatic respiratories of revelation from the singular voice of the illuminating burning bush of power, might and glory with the fingers of the light of love for the living God, which is the human temple and thereby made this human temple once more the perfect existential mirror for its divine guidance, whereby it's taught one ravished intoxicated servant from the eternal spiritual vistas of angelic exposition, that which he knew not, verily in its desire to be known within the inner recesses of the selves of all its creation. In this day, the seven archangels of theophanic unicity have been commanded to blast their trumpets of splendorous illumination, hovering above the portitious of the seven gates of the city of divinity, and the celestial brides of the divine intellects of effusion below them have uttered a shrill cry in unison re reverberating in waves upon the waters of life, which have sent the celestial concourses into a swoon. For it hath revealed 19 commandments uh, on top of the Sinai of the heart of its ravished one, that perchance its creation may live in love, peace, harmony, amity, equity, freedom, and justice with themselves their fellow creatures, and the life of the cosmos entire forevermore. And that also, perchance, this angel earth itself may ascend to the pinnacle of the tree of the reality of existence and be transformed back into the paradise of Eden and a blossoming garden of multifariously colored flowers of earth, flowers of truth, wisdom, light, gnosis, balance, and freedom, as it is in the Empyrean heavens of the glory, the commandments in this new eon, which have been eternal veritas known in the past, but are clothed now in a new garment, are. So before getting into the 19 commandments, I would like to give thanks to uh, our Sheikh and Morshid, Sheikh Wahid Azal of the Fatimiya Sufi Order. I give you all the greeting of Nur Alaikum and also Aslam Alaikum. Peace and blessings be upon all of you and yours. And I hope everything is going well as we are going through these uh, changing times, we are also in the month of Ramadan, the spring season, and a lot's taking place. And these 19 commandments, I believe, are not only beneficial for those of the Fatimiya, but all those that are on the path of trying to know thyself in this um, special age that we're in. So starting with number one, know thyself and awaken. Whosoever knows their self, their celestial guide or the imam of their being, the exclusive divine name of which they are a manifestation, their para -at atman, the holy guardian, Christic, angelic twin, Angelos, Christos, Signi of their being, knows their Lord, for know ye all are all of thee. The manifestations of my light and the fruits of my being, so look within and ye shall find me standing within manifest, luminous, mighty, splendorous, powerful, and resplendent. Therefore, the only true point of adoration, the Kibla, was in the conjunction, um, conjunction of the sun and the moon of the being of thine own heart, which is me, not elsewhere. So turn to it. Verily, I proclaim upon thee the great resurrection. Qiyamat al-Kubra, this is commandment number two, the age of inner truth and verification. So rend the veils, unfetter the bonds and smash the external idols of empty form and cleave forevermore to the pearls of inward meaning and reach out thereby to the loftiest heights of truth and realization in the world of eternity by whatsoever means or vehicles providence has provided for thee and not by the means of those outward husks of vain saltifying and narrow-minded formulas or those empty ritualisms without meaning nor those malevolent fundamentalist religious ex exto Extraericisms which drag down in prison in their cages of opaque darkness of limited and limiting materiality. So, you know, what I've been able to <clears throat> give you my perspective of the first commandment is that basically you have to know thyself, find that God 
and that oneness and that being of love, light, and happiness within you. Know thyself, know thy Lord, know thy Lord, know thyself. And ultimately, it's all about finding that within you, whether it's Neo going to the Oracle and she points to the sign which says, know thyself. You go to the Scottish Rite House of the Temple of Freemasonry in Washington, D.C. They're telling you the same thing, know thyself. In Islam, it's telling you the same thing in Surah 50, that God is closer to you than your jugular vein. And if you want to find Allah, find Allah in your heart. You look at the um, book of Luke in the Holy Bible, it tells you the kingdom of heaven is within. So wherever you're going, it's all telling you to look within. You spend your whole life from the outside trying to find your way back inside. And that's ultimately what it's about. And same thing with the second commandment. It's teaching you that don't let the um, aspects of materialism and what we're seeing in the world and those that are claiming to serve God but are only serving their ego and hubris, don't let the material, material or the exterior look basically sway you away from that path. You must stay focused and be able to perceive through all of it. Commandment number three, always on the path of the great work of life to death, to palingenetic pal resurrection, rely upon what thine own inner light and what the truth within tells, tells thee and not what thy neighbor, preacher, rabbi, priest, minister, mullah, sheikh, guru, clairvoyant, astrologer, institution, corporation, superior, bureaucrat, politician or popular consensus insists or demands that ye think and do therefore the only obedience due on the path of the great work of life to death to palingenetic resurrection is obedience to that voice of truth emanating forth when truly revealed un truly unveiled from within the essential light of thine own inner being or to that living vertical embodification of the proof of that truth in the outer world and nothing else so listen most intently to that mighty voice of truth. This reminds me of a quote from Rumi, which says that there is a voice that does not speak, but you have to listen to it. And there's that inner voice. You have to listen to it. And it's all about your heart. And the best advice that I always give to the people that I love is always listen to your heart. If you listen to your heart, your intuition will always tell you what's right for you, what's not right for you what you can do, what you cannot do, because we're all in our own point in our lives where, where you are exactly where you need to be. If someone is at a certain point in their life, then that's where they're meant to be. If you're at a certain point, it's like the sun and the moon, they shine at their own respective times. Everyone's got their own path, their own individual journey, rewards, consequences, points of learning, etc. But you must listen to that voice within, which will tell you, what to do, how to do it, in which manner to do it. So that's what you must strive to be in your life as you go through this journey. Number four, always above all to thine own self be true. And as the day follows the night, thou canst not be false to any person. For when thou art authentically true to thyself, never will the demons of fanaticism, narrow-mindedness, ignorance, selfishness, skewed vision, fundamentalism, hypocrisy, and deceit visit thee. So if you're <clears throat> truly on that path and you're listening to that heart within, there's nobody that can deceive you. And those deceivers will stay away from you because you'll be able to pick up on them right away. And that's exactly what it is. If you have that within you, then that's the greatest gift that you can give thyself is to know thyself and to know thy heart. Everything is an initiation of the heart. There might be those in life who have these grand titles and accolades from organizations, but in the end, they're still not initiated because they never truly went and fo followed the heart. So it's about following the heart and that cannot be stressed enough. Number five, do not fear anything. Fear and fear alone is the root of all evil. The very seed of hatred and the negation of love truth, freedom, justice, and all good besides. Therefore, bedeck thyself with the attribute of the gem of the highest courage and fortitude possible in all circumstances. Again, just like how many initiatic paths are teaching you that trust God and do not fear anything. Same thing, it, there's a verse in the Holy Quran that says that Allah is the guardian of those who believe and he brings them from darkness to light whom he wishes. So, 
we we let we let this life sometimes overwhelm us and sometimes it gets the best of us but there is a force out there the creator in whichever manner that you perceive it in your own individual path and journey that has led you to this point in your life and if it has led you to the if it has led you to this point in your life then it won't it won't abandon you it will make sure that whatever path or purpose you were manifested in this reality for you accomplish that so do not fear anything and continue to walk your path without any danger or fear whatsoever. Whatever is going to happen, it's going to happen. Right? So that's, that's basically it. Number six, love thyself first unselfishly and truly then can ye unselfishly love thy neighbor. For loving thyself unselfishly is the first step towards truly loving others unselfishly. Whilst in a divided heart which hates itself, which is really the selfishness of the base ego, Never can the seed of love for others bloom into anything but thorns, weeds, and thistles, as the mirror of the inner life is also the mirror of the outer life. So again, if you're good from the inside, then your external reality will serve the same purpose. Many of us, or many here in America that I've seen, always find somebody to blame for their issues that they're facing, right? Whether they're having relation issues and they're uh, blaming past traumas or they're refusing to take accountability of their current life instead of breaking generational traumas or curses, they themselves fall into that path of astrayness where they're going from one job to another, one relation to another, one friendship to another. And that's not how it works. While you continuously blame the outer reality when refusing to take accountability of your inner reality, isolating yourself, thinking everyone's out there to get you, that's the shaitan. That's, that's making you stay away from the people that you love. And at the end, you end up alone. So, you know, think about that. And that's why a lot of people here are suffering in the Western world. They lack, they lack that aspects of knowing thyself and finding that peace and harmony within while the abused is damaging the ones that has not been abused and vice versa. And it's just an endless cycle of, um, <laughs> just, it's just an endless cycle of generational trauma and people just falling apart at the seams. And that's why here people are suffering. So you got to fix yourself from the inside before you proceed to any relationship or any endeavor, any path, because if you're good from the inside, then you're good. Your outer reality will manifest the same. Seven, strive to be fair and just in all circumstances and always maintain the high standards of integrity, equity, and forthrightness in all thy dealings, both with thyself and with others. Be a righteous person. Be a man of your word. Be a woman of your word. If you can do something for someone, do it. If you cannot, then don't commit. And make sure that also at the same time, you're upfront with everyone. You don't hurt anybody's feelings. You don't break anybody's trust. You don't break anybody's heart because that karma will be reciprocated back to you. So always be true and upfront about who you are and what you're trying to do, not only for yourself, but for others. Don't jump around and you know play the in and out game with anybody. That's not fair, not to yourself and not to others. Eight, think good thoughts, utter good words and commit good things. For thoughts, words, and actions are as angels and demons, and it is in thy intentions whereby the good or the bad become manifest. And in the end, ye reap what ye sow, because such is my eternal law of cause and effect, karma. So speak and do whatever establishes thy inner peace, but always search thine intentions first before thinking, outwardly saying and doing. Again, same message that's reiterated. Number nine. Be detached from the world and content with what ye already possess. And take thine eyes, askance, askance from coveting thy neighbor's possessions, whether in the inner world or in the outer world. But with what ye already possess, you should always strive for the betterment of thyself and those around thee in all things and circumstances. Number 10, do not descend into superficiality and shape thy life exclusively by the passing and eph ephemeral standards fashions, contingencies, vanities, and trends of popular culture, but be modest and follow a balance. Hence, thou shalt not follow thy neighbor in their trends and habits, for if truly they had something other than, than of eternal value to offer thee, indeed, they would follow thee, not ye them. 11. 
do not be sheep among society, but rather be leaders of the light of whose mind and spirit always shines resplendent like a torch in the darkness. Therefore, let that light shine forth resplendent in the world. Gird up thy loins and fight the good fight for truth, equity, justice, and righteousness, wherever the non-existent darkness of negation hath cast its shadow and imprisoned the good in the opaque transparency of its lies. Strive always to speak the truth, even if it be the acme of blasphemous heresy, for honesty is the attribute of the highest gem that the temple of humanity can bedeck itself with, while deceit, dishonesty, hypocrisy, conceit, and obfuscation the lowest, the meanest, and most vile, which, as it, as it were, kills the world as well as its perpetrator. 13. My eternal covenant with thee is my love and my love alone. And from love follows justice, from justice follows truth, from truth follows freedom, and only then can there be unity in diversity. As every atom of my creation are so many manifestations of the various names and attributes of myself, mirroring me to, to thee, my various faces turn towards thee in every circumstance. For whichsoever place ye turn, there is the light of my face. So love truly that ye may truly be free. Again, Almighty God being the greatest treasure who's trying to understand itself through itself. In reality, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's all one being that's just projected in different attributes. 14. Thou shalt not found any more creeds, sects, and religious organizations that greedily, greedily claim exclusivity over my name, my truths, or my eternal virtue, verities. This is that whole my God, your God thing. For blessed is the spot and the house and the, and the place and the city and the heart and the mountain and the refuge and the cave and the valley and the land and the sea and the ocean and the island and the meadow and the forest and the jungle and the garden and the country and the church and the mosque and the synagogue and the temple and the cloister and the caravan and the reservation and the hospice, the ashram, the Hanukkah and the celebrating feast and the workshop. Everywhere, anywhere, where my, where, wherever my mention has, hath been made, my whatsoever, by whatsoever name or indication where my praise is glorified, for I have inspired my wise ones many a time before to teach thee that I have many names and am indicated by many indications and even in the worship of images, the stones and the idols am I to be found, that is. Whensoever such worship has occurred with unimp un unimpeachable sincerity, whereby the multiplicity of blind materiality hath that been in in erupted into the transparency of the light of divine unicity, Tawhid, my only religion to thee is the realization in the light of true celestial love and its realization by whatsoever means or vehicles alone, which is none other than the realization of that path, Sirat of the way of the payment of the existential life debt deemed to the all high that is realized by the means of the first commandment, whose outward path of consummation in this day until my return in 303 is represented by the ecclesia of, of my nur, the Fatimiya. 15, thou shalt not found any more governments and states in my name, oppressing in my name for political purposes, a worldly and material gain for that for what i for what need have i or have i ever had for your if you for your ephemeral governments and statecraft which always eventually pass into dust i am that i am and no government or political agenda can even ever encompass my vastness nor is there any need to for i am existent in all things present in all forms of belief including even with within the blindness of atheism Split a piece of wood and I am there. Lift up the rock and ye shall find me standing. And I do whatever I will to do regardless of that. Those with theo theocratic or authoritarian pretensions illegitim illegitimately seek to do in my name. Therefore know that any group or person wishing to establish a theocracy or any form of authoritarian polity are seeking one after their own selfish and base desires to control and oppress others by the vain delusions born of their own fear, their own personal psychological and spiritual contamination. And so by their limited and false imaginings, seek ye, however, to found instead an eco-socialist, universal, 
theophanocracy of light, the rule of the theophanies of my being, which ye all, all already always are. Within existing frameworks of secular social democratic society whose animating inner working spirit ye shall then alchemically and theoretically sacralize for such is the best and most worthy form of government for ye all guaranteeing thy rights, freedoms, welfare, and protections and one truly reflective of the protective freedom of the spirit itself. 16. Seek to be a true friend to all nations, colors, creeds, beliefs, persuasions, preferences, for they are all various hues and lo loki of my manifestations and the various fruits of the tree of existence. For just as there is no inner difference between woman and man, there is also no difference between thy colors, creeds, beliefs, persuasions, and preferences other than in your own perspectives. 17. Seek always to take care of the children, the infirm, the sick, the lame, the ailing, the homeless, the injured, the destitute, the wronged, the oppressed, the downtrodden, the wretched of the earth, the dispossessed and the elderly, even if thou must sacrifice much from thou, thyself in so doing. For those in need are all in circumstances, my face mirroring me to thee and attest for thine own advancement, betterment and realization, would ye but know it. So everything is God testing you that's the ultimate reality 18 take care of my angel the earth gaia jealously protect the life pulsating within her throughout her around her above her and vigilantly safeguard all the creatures under her care in all circumstances and contingencies if that is thou art to remain true to thy essential calling as my vice grant upon the earth Therefore, always be in balance with, with the earth, for in this age, the buying and the selling, the trade and the commerce, and the four elements, air, fire, water, and earth, have verily been prohibited and made illicit, haram, by the heaven of my command. So do not allow the earth to be ravaged any more by the ravenous beasts of industry, corporation, selfish profit mongering, and above all, by those demons of waste and those demons of the machine. For nature and the earth are my most sacred trust to thee, containing therein the portals to the most wondrous Loki of my manifestation, as I am above all the mother, but in thy world and throughout all the realms of existence. Know that peace without justice is appeasement. Uh, excuse me, number 19. Know that peace without justice is appeasement and encouragement of the tyrant and continuation of his tyranny. Strive ye always, therefore, in all thy endeavors to render all their just and equitous due, and they thine. For without justice, true peace is not possible. And without true peace, true unity is not possible. And in their absence, neither is the realization of true love possible. This is the balance. This is the balance. This indeed is the balance. And these are the 19 commandments of the Fatimiyya Sufi order. And I hope you were able to get something from it as it's all teaching us the oneness of God, standing up for justice, defending the weak, the oppressed, the elderly, orphans, widows, being a good human being, accepting all humanity, bringing oneness to earth, bringing peace to earth, making sure everyone is treated with equity and justice, and try to fight for a world where your kids and their kids and their kids can have a future not only them, but all living beings on this earth to protect Mother Earth and her beings and species and realms of existence, protecting each other as a human family, regardless of race or religion, not letting the agents of chaos divide us on, based on the differences of religion or how, how we view the world and the perspectives, falling into the trap of, if you don't believe what I believe, you're going to hell and you're God and my God. This is the teaching, the oneness of God and bringing us all together in a time where we are most needed. So if any of you are interested in the Fatimiyya Sufi order, please reach out to me, and I will make sure that you are guided properly. Thank you. Much love to all of you. And I hope, my friends, that you were able to get something from this. Thank you again.